One of the first assignments I like to give students is to build a snow person. And it's just going through and using what we call primitive modeling to create you know, your standard snow person. You make three large spheres, you make spheres or boxes, and really using whatever basic primitive models you have and manipulating and moving them around in order to make your classic snow person. So uh, I'm gonna go through and since this is distance learning. I want to make a video for you on how I would go about doing that so you have it as reference. Uh, you don't necessarily need to go through and do it exactly as I do it here. All right, so I'm going to come over here to Sphere. I think this one is a good place to start, though. Go ahead, make sure perspective is active. I'm going to give it a radius of 100 and hit Create. And hit Z to zoom out. I'm going to just click here. And say edged faces. There we go. All right, so now I have a sphere. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to right click on it and say clone, and I'm going to clone it as an instance. I'm going to just rolling my middle mouse wheel. I'm zooming in and out, holding my middle mouse wheel and panning. I'm just going to right click and say move, and now I can move this up. So let's go in, I'm going to scale it in a little bit here right click go to move move it down some right click and say clone again it's an instance bring it up and maybe we'll scale this one down a little bit more too right click move all right so notice i'm making these changes here in the front view i can zoom out my other ones you can move objects around here in the 3D space, but I think as you're getting started, getting familiar and comfortable move, utilizing these 2D views as what they are is very helpful. Let's go ahead, I'm gonna make a cylinder here. I'm gonna do this in the top though. I'm just gonna click and drag, release, and do the side. Now I'm looking at my other views, so I'm just gonna stop and then right click and move it up. And then I'm gonna actually Go ahead and clone it as an instance. And I'm just gonna go to scale here, hold the middle mouse button, scale it up, and then maybe here in the top, just grab this little handle in the middle to scale it in, make it shorter, and then we can just kind of move him down. All right, so now he's got a little bit of a hat. And if I want to put eyes on our snow person, let's make maximize our viewport here. I'm going to move around so I'm kind of like at the front. Over here in negative space, kind of by on the ground, I'm going to click and drag to make a, a sphere. Now, why do I do that? If I try and do it on his face, I make a sphere, but I am making it on the ground plane, so it's way back there. So I'm going to hit delete, delete that guy. Right click to turn that off. Now with this active, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn on select in place. And so now it actually goes right on the surface of the model. So let's go ahead and we'll restore our viewports here. So we can see if I zoom in on the front, we can kind of see the positioning of it. You can orbit around. You can see sort of what it is on the front. You can always make this default shaded too if you want. So here I am, I could kind of move this around. I can scale it up to make it a little bit bigger. And now I'm going to right click and clone this as an instance. Going to move, I'll just move him over to the other side. Clone it as an instance. Kind of move it over here, but maybe I'm going to make it smaller now. Once again, clone as an instance. And I'm just going to switch him back over to select in place and clone and clone, oops, and I can, I could do this in the front too, it should, should work just fine because it is looking at the surface of the model, there we go, and now let's go ahead and I'm going to make a, uh, I'm going to make, give him a carrot nose, so I'm going to go ahead and let's go and we're going to make a cone, and I could do this in the front, I guess. If I try and do it here, I'm not going to be able to really see what I'm doing because it's kind of inside of them, right? Like you could, you could see it there on the top and 
left. I guess that would work. I'm dragging down. And it kind of makes a tip, and I can just switch this over to move. And I kind of bring that out. There we go. It doesn't have to have a hat. You could always delete anything you don't like. Uh, we'll get into details about how to really go in and surface an object in later assignments. For now, if you want to change the colors, it's easy just to change the color swatches right here. Deselect those. Let's go in and we'll make this look black. There we go. I'll make all these other ones. Maybe not pure white. We'll go this slightly off white there. There we go. And then we could just make some cylinders. Now the arms, the cylinders. Remember, don't worry about making the perfect cylinder. I just made one. Now I can come over here to modify and I can make it a little bit thinner and a little bit more narrow. And so when I move it into position, because the way cylinders are made, their origin is at wherever you make that first cylinder. Up here, this is your, your pivot point control. So you could center your pivot by choosing the selection center. Or if you click and hold on that, you could select the next one, the very first one. And when I say first, anytime you click and hold on a drop down, that shows you everything. Up above that is your current selection, but underneath that is your all of them. And so I'm gonna do pivot point center, and that's its origin. So now when I go to move it, with select in place, it will be placed, and everything is placed based on that kind of position. There we go. And so I'm going to right click on this guy and go move. But now what I'm going to do when I go to move it, I'm actually going to change my reference coordinate system from view to local. And see how that changes? Now it matches the origin of the object that was created. So I can just move this along Z, but I'm going to do right click and clone as an instance and kind of move that out. And now I can go into rotate and I can just kind of rotate that over and I can do the same thing and I can come in here, right click and clone it as an instance, go to move. And once you've changed that, it's always set to that until you change it back. So I can kind of move this out. And this time I'm going to right click and go into scale, but I want my scale to actually be that axis, that local axis again, so I can bring that down. Maybe I'll make it a little bit wider. Yeah, look at that. Perfect. I'll go rotate, but I'm going to make my rotate local. There we go. So this is just one way to get a little bit more control as you're working on these things. Um, right click, clone as an instance, go back into move, kind of move that out, go back into my scale here, and rotate it. And maybe, let's see, orbit around a little bit, maybe make him a little bit thinner. There we go, but longer. Perfect. And now, now I want beefier again. All right, clone it one more time. It's an instance. Move it up. Go into rotate. Clone it as an instance. And once again, we're going to move it out. And we'll rotate them again. There we go. I don't want to have to rebuild that every single time, so I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to do this. I'm going to use select and link. I'm going to click on this guy and drag it down. Click on him and drag him down. And what I've done is I just created a parent-child relationship. Meaning, if I go and rotate this guy, it rotates the other one. Let's grab all three of those. Right-click and say clone as an instance. And we'll go back into move. Select just one of them here see how he moves the other guys. We can go into rotate, rotate him a little bit. Let's go back to that center one. Here's a neat trick, double click, and if you have anything linked together, they all get selected. Grab all three of them, right click, clone is an instance. Go into move, go 
just going to grab one of them here. There we go. Rotate that. Oops. This is kind of how you do animation is by building little rigs and connections like that and stuff. There we go. That's looking pretty cool. Let's grab all these. Actually, yeah, let's grab all of them. Right click, clone as an instance. Just grab one. And I'm going to kind of move him over and down and over. Up. And this is getting kind of complicated. So we'll just look at it here from the front. Just kind of rotate it. Now, you wouldn't see all those bones on a thumb. Let's just take it down to two. There we go. Now he's got a big scary arm. Now, if you wanted to get that to the other side, how do you do that? Well, we talked about grouping. So let's select these. We're going to say group and group them together. We're going to call it R underscore arm for right arm. Now I'm going to right click on that and say clone as a copy and say OK. And now I'm going to come up here and there's a button called mirror. It's also over here, tools, mirror. And you can see I'm mirroring it on the X axis. And so I say OK. Now I'm just going to move that over. So here in the front, I moved it over, so now I have two arms on my crazy looking snow person. All right. So now we've talked about kind of selecting place and working with cloning, instancing, reference coordinate systems, and I even showed you a little bit about linking things together. So that's one way that you could go about making a snow person. Uh, I'd like you to go through and kind of show, take what I've shown you here and use these techniques to kind of make your own though. And that's what you'll save. And that's the image that you'll turn in for.